Gehen wir mal rein hier. Schauen wir mal, wie der Test ausgefallen ist. We're gonna settle this once and for all. Who's the fastest driver in my company? Get amazing prices on the brands you love at Microcenter. Microcenter has over 30,000 items in stock, including desktops, laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs and more. Not sure which parts to choose for your next build? Then use Microcenter's custom PC builder to find compatible parts, create your parts list, add them to your cart and use same day pickup at one of Microcenter's 25 locations nationwide. And if you're not comfortable building it, one of Microcenter's professional builders can build it for you as fast as same day for a fee. And if you need ideas for a build, then head to Microcenter's build showcase for great build inspiration or submit your build for others to see. To see everything that Microcenter has to offer, click the link in the description below. All the clickbait aside now, uh, remember when we built this rig here? This is the TRX racing rig from Track Racer. Uh, we were sent the Moza gear that I said we would do a separate video on. I figured kind of a fun Hey, nur die Kamera, die da gerade ist. Holy moly. Fun way to sort of play around with it and show you guys how it works is to maybe just have like a little time attack challenge here within our group. So Phil, Nick and I are going to be going head to head today on seeing who can put down the fastest laps in the Seto Corsa in the 2014 Hankook C um, LMS R8. And we're gonna do it at uh, Laguna Seca. But anyway. Ich habe schon gedacht, sie machen jetzt, äh, sie machen jetzt Project Cars an. <lacht> ich habe wirklich gedacht, sie machen jetzt Project Cars an. Just a kind of a quick overview of the racing pedals and wheel and uh, base that we have here. This is the Moza R9 Direct Drive. This is also our Quest Pro, which we are going to be using um, for VR. It's kind of their their upper mid level mid level base. They have like a R12, I think, too. That's even stronger than this one, but. This is so much nicer than my club sport base that I have right now from my Fanatec that I got something like six, seven years ago. Um, small too, as you can see right here. It's also direct mounted to the frame. Now the steering wheel here, they have a ton of different wheels that you can choose from. This is the FSR Formula wheel. We also have a GT wheel. And the difference is they're both yokes. This one has the screen on it, as you can see. It also has the TAC RPM right here, actual adjuster knobs. So you can adjust things like turbo settings, brake ABS settings, all on the fly, neutral reverse. Um, you have your overtake button, you know, you have your DRS button if you're doing a lot of formula racing. It's pretty neat because all of this, if the program is designed to be able to speak to the wheel, which a set of Corsa is, then these buttons are functional. Then the pedals are the CRP racing pedals. These are load cell, uh, adjustable in terms of like the retention or the, the spring tension on like the clutch, where the clutch engagement is, the brake pedal. Um, is adjustable in terms of its feedback as well as its load cell rating and then obviously tension and stuff on the gas pedal. We kind of left all of it where it is out of the box right now. The brake, brake pedal is a pretty nice feel where it's a lot firmer than a street car but it's not as firm as say a non um, boosted or non like vacuum boosted um, race car which those are like Das muss richtig knallen muss das das muss bitte als wenn du gegen eine Betonwand trittst so muss das sein very hard like pushing on a cinder block but they're designed to be that way um we also do not have a shifter as you might notice so if we ever play around with cars that have an h pattern shifter um or a like a dog box or some sort of a um sequential we're going to add that later it's just they were out of stock with the kind of shifter that we wanted i also want to put a hydro brake on here so we can play around with drifting in the future so that's the setup here in terms of its quality because this is a direct drive wheel um, and right now we're in the game it actually has feedback to where it wants to go back to center. But when it's off, it will just spin indefinitely. It's not like there's an actual like clock spring in there that stops. So also too, um, you can set this up with an e-stop or an emergency stop, which I don't have, which would be nice, especially, I have another one of these. Wer benutzt denn bitte eine Not aus, Junge? Kein Mensch. Wofür? Rigs for home, but I have a whole different wheel pedal setup that I have to put together. It does have an e-stop and it's going to be like right up here because Phil has already had this wheel bite him. The tension on this, the force feedback tension is so strong that if you lose control and it starts like spinning around wildly, especially because it's a yoke and not a circle, the yoke can really smack your hand and it hurts. So like my kids, when they come here and they've already played on this a couple times with me watching, I'll go into the Moza software and I will basically put the force feedback to almost nothing. Let's take a look at the software real quick and then we'll just get right to it and have some fun. I figured it'd be fun. This is sort of like Top Gear's, you know, reasonably priced car, only we're doing it in a fast car that requires a lot of concentration and we're gonna get a few pra practice laps and then an outlap and, and a time lap. However, the difference is 
Ich bin da sehr gespannt. So the software is called Moza Pithouse. As you can see, it even shows you a visual representation of the actual wheel and base and pedal that's connected to it because they are USB devices. 50% for feedback. Entschuldigung, excuse me. What? A maximum steering angle. You can adjust all this. Um, this is the game force, back, uh, force feedback intensity. This is like I was saying when my kids are driving, I'm like, we're going to go down to like 10%. You know what I mean? But anyway, I leave it at 50 right now. You can hit more, go into fine tune adjustments, wheel spring strength. As you can see, I've got it at 100. Um, wheel damper, like you can really uh, adjust this stuff if you want. That's the cool thing about a direct drive base is it's all, it's all just the motor doing it. So there's no belts and return springs and stuff that are that are analog mechanical adjustment or man mechanical features that can't be software adjusted. It's all adjusted right here. You might be wondering what this is for. Believe it or not, like with F1 cars and GT cars, you can like, well, maybe not necessarily F1, but certain cars, you can adjust the boost, like the turbo right here as a dial. So you can turn it up and turn it down as the race goes on. Same thing with ABS and or this right That's here would be a map for like your traction control, ABS. You can adjust all that on the fly. So the game, as long as it's designed to utilize that, can absolutely do so. Um, moving on without going through you know, a ton of settings here. This is kind of neat. All of our pedals are set as a linear curve right now, but you can make it adjusted as an S curve, a concave, a domed curve, based on you know, what your particular, like, I guess, preferences would be. This is the screen type. You can change it to like the different um, right now it says lost connection, but that's fine. You can change the screen type to be something that you want it to be. Maybe you don't want to be showing your tachometer and gear and all and your lap times and stuff. So you schade, dass man das nicht in SimHub machen kann. Das ist wirklich schade und ich hoffe, dass sich da Mosa nochmal öffnet. Adjust through. that. That's very cool. This is the hub. This is for if we don't have a hub on here, but this is if you're atta attaching other stuff like the little, they have a, Mosa has a little dash. That could be mounted to the top of the frame. It's got a shifter and it's handbrake. I will need this when I go to do the handbrake and shifter on here. Um, so this becomes a control hub for the parts going to it. And then this connects to the computer, which is kind of nice. It's pretty good software. Uh, das geht, by the way, auch ohne. Ne? Also ihr könnt auch uh, Pedale, äh, Pedale sei schon, Handbremse etc. pp. könnt ihr auch einzeln anschließen. Also man braucht den Hub nicht zwingen. Software. And the reason why I say good software is coming from Fanatec, and I know I keep comparing it to Fanatec, it's the only other like boutique brand I have to compare with. It has been a nightmare with Fanatec. Fanatec has finally moved on to a GUI style like this, <laughs> or graphics user interface, but it's still not as good as Moza's. And it's funny, because Moza came along way after Fanatec. So Fanatec... Warum gibt's denn dem Hub, falls du, ähm, falls du wenig Anschlüsse frei? Na, der Hub hat den Vorteil, dass du nur ein Kabel zum Computer führen musst. Ne? Also es gibt ja Menschen, so bei, bei mir jetzt als Beispiel, ich habe jetzt drei USB-Hubs an meinem, ähm, meinem Sim-Racing-PC. So, es gibt ja Leute und es gibt auch Mainboards, wo vielleicht nur drei oder vier, fünf USB-Ports dran sind, wo ich mir dann wirklich überlegen würde, ob ich mir nicht ein anderes Mainboard kaufe, weil das doch schon sehr wenig ist in der heutigen Zeit, aber auch wieder auf der anderen Seite nicht jeder so viel USB-Ports braucht. Und dafür ist der Hub halt da. Du kannst aber auch, äh, Moment... Also Mosa selber hat auch äh, hier drinnen den Hub noch. Ne? Also man kann das jetzt hier mal sehen. Du könntest jetzt beispielsweise hier auch das Dash anschließen. Oder die Pedale. Das geht auch. Also die, die Möglichkeiten bestehen auch, dass man einen Großteil der Sachen auch schon selber in der Wheelbase anschließen kann und nicht zwingend den äh, Hub braucht dafür. Ne? Der Hub ist ein cooles Goodie, aber wie gesagt, braucht man nicht unbedingt. Es ist eine deutsche Kompanie und ich fühle mich, dass sie sehr schnell zu innovieren in Terms der Software. So. Die sind auch immer noch slow. There's that. All right, so while Nick gets himself adjusted here, here's how we're gonna do this. They're gonna get three practice laps. If you crash and reset, that's a lap. So then you're gonna get a restart, which is where right now in Laguna Seca, this is before the fast 90 left where you go onto the front straight. Technically, that's not an out lap because you're gonna have full speed by the time you cross the line, but we're gonna do two laps. That cross the line, cross the line again, and when you come back, whatever your best time is, that's your time. And I think whoever loses today should have to buy lunch. If you guys are wondering, we have John Wick coins that were printed that we each have that we have to pay each other with whenever the other person wants like lunch from that person. Now, one of the rules is, as hecklers, we cannot interfere with the driver, the headset, or the rig in any way. So I could be like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm, I'm not touching you. I'm not interfering with you directly. 
you, you can see that because- Yeah, I can. <laughs> it's not <laughs> sealed off. <laughs> Do you feel like breathing? Cross? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can see your screen. <laughs> so as you can see, the screen works with a set of Corsa. Oh, well, he's not hand over hand right now. <laughs> so that was his last lap, was a 133. Okay, it just restarted. It's showing him his uh, sector offset time. It says 0% on battery because this isn't one of those cars that has like the electric assist. Uh, like F1 has a little electric assist and LMP and whatnot. Shows us our current tire temperatures. Um, current speed in kilometers, what gear we're in, the overtake, you know, is active, well, available, I guess, which doesn't exist in this car. So it's pretty neat. Shift so unlocking. Right, next last practice lap. Oh, look, it's an RGB shift light. I know, I, I love that. <laughs> Get closer. <laughs> That's yeah, richtig gemein. You want to hear the sounds I make when I'm alone? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're already a second slower. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> it says right there, plus one on the sector one. I guess we should have turned on the driving line for you. Wow. Damn. Can you feel me? I don't want to, but yes. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Stop. No, watch me. I can see you're through your, I can see through your little screen. <laughs> Go get your own. <laughs> you know, oh, look at that. Your P1, according to the wheel, but that's, you know, because there has to be only one car on the track for you to ever be P1. Wow. Gemeine. Why did it just flicker? What did you do? I didn't do anything. Okay. You just suck. What did you do? 130.39. All right, Phil just has to be the 130.390. I'm going to be buying lunch, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying you're slow. I meant I only cared about beating Nick because if I didn't beat Nick, I would never hear the end of it. However, Nick has been sim racing with like the Nissan Challenge guys now for a long time and I've been sitting out, so I am at a disadvantage at the moment. I don't even remember this track. I've driven it so many times in every video game, I still suck at it. Freaking short, short so shift my height. Gute Strecke, ne? Muss man auch mal sagen. He's doing it himself. <laughs> oh, das Klick ist so laut bei Mosa. At least I'm short enough to see the... Oh, there's a Whoa. turn there. Okay, that, that lap didn't count. I don't want to heckle Phil. If I do right now, I'm just being a dick. You did it to me. Yeah, but I've known you for like 14 years, so it's fine. Phil, hurry up and no day longer. My other car has 97 <laughs> horsepower. I don't remember these turns. Which one the tighter one? Uh, nice. And that's why they paved that corner in. Yeah, because everyone <laughs> cuts it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Turn! You know here, you don't know how to drive Jesus cars. Jesus can't take that wheel. Jesus, yeah. take the wheel! They, they didn't have cars back then, dude. You have been stopped. <laughs> they, they don't have cars back then? Imagine all the Hebrews going dumb, dead some ton of chariots and turn tight ones. Ooh, hey, tell me when to go. Control fell off. All that track. All that track. Wow. When Nick is talking about your line. <laughs> it's okay, I can't hear Nick. He talks too quiet anyway. He said, all that track. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, okay. I still can't hear that. You have more room to your right. What? <laughs> There's extra room to your right. It's what? It's that check wall. Oh, oh damn it. Oh, cut the check Oh. GG. You can always see our eyeballs. It just looks like. <laughs> that sun is really in your face right there. A star does that. It's not a star, it's a sun. It's, you're a sun. Is that a fat joke? He's really focused. He really doesn't want to move. <laughs> no, it doesn't have ABS, so of course there's a lot of concentration to make sure I'm not locking it up. Oh, that's a curb. Dang it. Wow. Jay actually crashed it. <laughs> I didn't uh -oh. even crash it. Dude, that curb. <laughs> I think it's just cosmetic damage, honestly. Your face is cosmetic damage. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> just like a bite. Come over here and breathe on him or something. I don't want to breathe on him. This is Nick heckling. I don't really Nick's know. like, I saw his practice laps. He doesn't need any help. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty comfortable. As I said. <laughs> wow. Right now, he's literally, he's he, driving he, to... He visualizes you win. Yeah. He's like, he sees that He's like, like I'm it. visualizing the Cheesecake Factory right now. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the match of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there it is. I lost. Oh, wow. Dude. Look, you see the marks right there? Here, let's go look at them. 
Oh my god! <laughs> no, so does that mean tiebreaker for me and Jay? Because no. we both DNF'd? No, because I got one good lap. Oh yeah. And so did you, but my one good lap, I don't think was... I don't know if it was faster than you. 133.644. Wait, what was mine? 645. Oh my god! <laughs> There's no way we could have planned that. Not it. <laughs> oh my god. I'm actually mad that it's a thousandth of a second that I have to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> and I end up with lunch. Well, clearly I lost because it sucks. You know, the most is terrible. <laughs> we're going to kind of keep this going. We, we decided we were going to keep like a whiteboard somewhere and we're probably not going to do it in like an LMS car. We're going to do it like literally the reasonably priced car. And we were thinking the Honda Fit, which to be honest is actually kind of hard because once you get speed going with that, it doesn't want to turn. So we'll play around with that. Maybe we'll make a spreadsheet that somebody can just kind of keep an eye on online for their der Bildschirm, Alter, auf dem, rechts, auf dem Tisch da ist einfach so, okay. Entertainment to be like, who's winning this week? So, anyway, time to go. We got RTFM show coming up soon. So, we got to get out of here and put this video somewhat. I want lunch. Huh? I want lunch. Well, I'm not buying it. He is. He's, he's lost by a thousand. Bill, can I have lunch, please? No. Interessant zu sehen. Ich wäre jetzt nicht unbedingt VR gefahren und auch nicht unbedingt Audi ohne ABS ganz am Anfang. Das ist ja doch schon ein bisschen... Riskant, wenn man sich noch nicht so auskennt, würde ich mal behaupten. Aber cool. Aber es ist schön zu sehen, dass sie Spaß hatten. Das äh, freut mich. Wirklich. Okay.